Welcome everyone for joining the service, worship service to Father God in heaven. It's time for us to worship Him in spirit and in truth, okay? Confessing all our sins to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ and to be ready to receive the precious words of God which give us life and power and also sound mind. All right, Heavenly Father, we are here together in the name of Jesus Christ, believing our Lord Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures and buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We believe in you. That's why we are here, Lord. Open gate of heaven, Lord, and anoint all of us with the Spirit of God so that we may understand your words, Lord, your love and kindness and your mercy and your power, Lord. Protect us from the power of darkness in this time that the angels minister to us. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, before we hear the sermon, uh, let me read the book of Psalm chapter 23. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with the oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall Follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, today's main scripture is book of Psalm chapter 22, uh, verse 20. Verse 22 to the end of, end of verse 31. Let me read it for you. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of his congregation will I praise thee. You that fear the Lord, praise him. All you that the seed of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all you the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall glory. I praise the Lord, the seek him, your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. And they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship all day they go down to the dust, shall how before him, shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him, it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto people 
that shall be born that he hath done this. Amen. Okay, as you see, today's theme, subject of message is what? The grace of God that made the sinners be the brothers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you believe it? If you really believe in Jesus Christ, you are saved and born again of the Holy Spirit, then you are brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means, how come we can be brothers of God? You know why? Because we have the same spirit, the Holy Spirit, as Jesus had within him. If you understand this kind of mysterious truth, it's very hard to believe it, but it is true. Today shall be your day of blessing, abundant blessing from heaven. So listen to the message, okay? Don't sleep. Don't think of something else. Just pay attention to the words of God. 22nd chapter of Psalm is the prophecy of suffering and death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, to be appearing in the earth spoken through the mouth of King David long time ago, almost 3,000 years ago. King David began to pray, saying, in Psalm chapter 22, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It was the, his own crying of screaming in the situation that he felt himself as if he were forsaken by the Lord God. But the Lord God has chosen him as a figure of Jesus Christ to come as a model. And he anointed him as prophet, a priest, and a king, just as Jesus Christ. He ate the bread in the holy place, as you know, priest did. Not only Psalm 22, but in other psalms of him, there are written of the Lord Jesus Christ, such as his suffering and his death and his resurrection and also of his appearing to take the Christians, his children, home in heaven and of the things to be happening in the period of 70 week of Daniel that is great tribulation to come and also of judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ as king of kings and lord of laws and also, finally, of his kingdom to be built in the earth for a thousand years. Now, to fulfill the prophecies of himself, Jesus cried out unto the Father God in a midst of extreme suffering on the cross, being forsaken by the Father for a while. Apostle Matthew testified of this sin as he as if he saw and heard in book of Matthew. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness of all the, the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus Christ, with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama samakhtani. That is to say, in English, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In the book of the gospel written by the apostles of Jesus, there are not written of the words of Jesus in details spoken by him on the cross, but the Holy Ghost used the mouth of King David to prophesy of the words of Jesus in a midst of extreme afflictions made by King Saul, that is, 
a figure of Antichrist to come, and choosing David as a figure of Christ to come. And in the book of Psalm chapter 22, it is said, But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of man, and despised of the people. All they that see my left me to scorn, they shoot out their lips, they shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. The Apostle Matthew testified of Christ Jesus prophesied through the mouth of King David. In the book of Matthew, some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man called it for alias, and straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be. Let us see whether Elias will come to save him. The King David prophesied of Jesus nailed on the cross and received vinegar in other psalm. You know, psalm chapter 69. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. King David has never eaten gall for his meat, nor drink vinegar. But the Holy Ghost made him prophecy of the suffering of Jesus Christ, the Messiah to come. He had never had his hands and feet nails on the cross. But he testified of the crucifixion of Jesus as if he had seen him on the cross. He said in the Holy Spirit, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, a day pierced my hands and my feet, I may tell all my bones, they took, they look and stay upon me, a day part my garments among them, and cast the lots upon my vesture. Now, from the verse 22nd through the end of the chapter, we see the prophecy of declaration of the victory for the people of Israel as well as the church of God, that is, his body through his suffering and death and resurrection. I will declare my, thy name unto my brethren, in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. You that fear the Lord, praise him. All you the seed of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all you the seed of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath it did his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee, in the great congregation, I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat, and he satisfied, they shall praise. The Lord that seek him, your heart shall live forever. Now the one that knows no sin made himself of no reputation in heaven and took upon him the form of servant, and was made in the likeness of man. He also made, me, made the sin of the world unto his body to make him sin itself, to receive the curse and punishment that the sinners deserved to receive. And the Holy Ghost declares of what he had done for all men to make his brothers when they believe and receive him whether they are the Jews or Gentiles without any discrimination. 
Yeah, we are able to conform of such surprising fact. In the words of Jesus spoken in the woman after he resurrected. Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Jesus also spoke unto Magdalene Mary of this, saying, The disciples became his brothers. Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. What an amazing announcement of Jesus Christ after he resurrected. The Holy Ghost also prophesied through the mouth of King David of the kingdom of Christ to be established in the earth after he appeared again to the world to judge the world. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is Lord's, and he is governor among the nations. All they that be fed upon earth shall eat and worship. All that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. They were not seen yet. Jesus became governor of all nations. King of a king's lot of all nations. We have not seen yet. It's what is to come when Jesus comes back to the earth after he judged the world. And the Lord God made King David prophecy of the blessing of not only the people of Israel and the church of God in the kingdom of Christ, but also the Gentiles, nations of people that shall repent and receive him by faith through the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. Apostle Paul understood of the blessing in the kingdom of God, kingdom of Christ, encouraged unto the saints in Corinthian church. He said unto them, Give none of offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Now, there are three groups, the Jews and the Gentiles, and the church of God. In the final two verses, Psalm chapter 22, King David made a very important prophecy. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he has done this. Yeah, God made a plan to adopt his children through regeneration in the Holy Spirit before the foundation of the world Whosoever the Jews or Gentiles believe in Christ Jesus, they shall die to take away the sin of the world and to make them brothers of the Lord Jesus Christ. King David testified of this saying, a people that shall be born, and also said, shall declare his righteousness. He has done this. Yeah, he testified of the righteousness of God that gives salvation unto them through the redemption of sins, even the remission of sins that is given by the blood of Jesus Christ. Apostle Peter testified of the people that shall be born. They are the children of God, belong to the church of God. He said, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light, which in time 
past were not the people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Yeah, we are the ones that gain mercies of God. Apostle Paul also testified of the children of God that are born again of the Holy Spirit, that are the brothers of Jesus Christ in the letter unto the Hebrews. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. That means Jesus Christ and we are one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. Can you believe that? So brothers and sisters is very, very, you know, blessed, you know, name. Calling to another brother and sister. All right? It's much better than pastor, elders, deacons, you know. Brother and sister means brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. For both he does sanctify and they were sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church. Yeah, we are gathered together in the church, right? Yeah. Will I sing praise unto thee? And again I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. Apostle Paul testified of the brothers of Jesus Christ, that is the church of God, that are the members of the body of Christ. He understood of the such amazing grace so that he was willing to rejoice in his sufferings for the church members. But now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up the which is behind of afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Whereof I am made the minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me and for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah, it is a mystery. When you believe in Jesus, receive him as the Lord and Savior. Believing he died for our sins and, and buried and rose again third day. Sincerely, okay? Not in vain. In all our heart. Then Jesus Christ, you know, come in our heart. Then he stay with us. Dwell in us. It is a, it is a, mystery, it's a mystery, okay? Mystery. Jesus Christ, you know, dwell in every one that believe in Jesus Christ. It's a mystery. God made Apostle Paul testify in the spirit of the blessing given unto his church, giving him the revelation of his church. For God wants his church to understand such amazing a blessing given unto them. We are able to understand of the blessing that we have received through the letters of Apostle Paul unto the Church of Rome, as well as unto Ephesians. The Spirit of itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with them that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy 
to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He also said, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be that had over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullest of him, the fullest all in all. Yeah, it is a church. The congregation of a church, the riches of what? Riches of him. He is the one that fears he is the one to feel all things. The Holy Ghost wants us to understand the glory for the Church of God. Even the members of the body of Christ, through the words given today, Blessed are they that have the ear to hear, only that understand the words of God could see the glory to receive in the future could feel all kinds of afflictions unto his body for the church of God. He would really understand to became brother of Jesus Christ, sister of Jesus Christ. That means, you know, this church is his body. They are supposed to love one another. Even, you know, you, you are ready to take a suffering as Jesus Christ did. That's why I pray for all of you that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of understanding being enlightened, that we may know that is the, what is the hope of His calling. Understand what is your hope when you are saved? And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Amen. I bless all of you to understand this truth. Must be humble to ask, you know, the Lord to give you wisdom and understanding. There's no other way. Father, thank you for giving us a real blessing, marvelous blessing. How can you make us your brother of Jesus Christ? Just like the sinners as uh, like us, Lord. Yeah, that's why Jesus said, God so loved the world, has given only begotten Son of God, who said, believe in Him, shall not perish, but to receive everlasting life through the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen.